The Toyota Tacoma has always been the absolute pinnacle of the midsize pickup truck segment with its exceptional off-road capability, unrivaled reliability, and terrific practicality. It's no wonder that it remained the best midsize pickup truck for years on end. However, after the 2024 redesign, things took a turn for the worse, as Toyota practically dropped all the qualities that made the Tacoma beloved and replaced them with a shallow shell of its former self. Today, we'll be assessing the damage done to this once incredible pickup truck as we answer the question that most of us have been asking. What in the world is going on with the Toyota Tacoma? Reliability, a legacy tarnished. One of the defining characteristics of the Toyota Tacoma was, without a doubt, its reliability. Let's be honest here, if you were looking for an immensely capable and incredibly dependable vehicle for a reasonable price all at one, you simply couldn't rival the Tacoma. First of all, the engines of the old Tacoma were bulletproof, especially that good old naturally aspirated V6. It was capable, it was well proven, and everybody loved it. And even that 2.7 liter 4 banger that was used in it was a pretty good companion too, as even though it was underpowered, it was so simple and dependable that little could go wrong. Fast forward to today and the Tacoma has traded all the qualities that made it for nothing more than being trendy. The new Tacoma comes as standard with a 2.4 liter turbo 4 engine, which makes it one of the smallest engines in the segment currently. The only truck that has a smaller engine is the Ranger, however it uses the decade proven 2.3 liter EcoBoost, whereas the Tacoma uses an unproven lump under its hood. In addition, Toyota has also decided to add an 8-speed transmission to the Tacoma, which we would usually commend. However, this piece of trash has already proven itself to be incredibly undependable even more than the previous model 6-speed, which was arguably the old Tacoma's biggest letdown. Toyota has already recalled numerous Tacomas last month because of these transmissions and have decided to replace them altogether. And as a cherry on top, Toyota's other models that have entered production in the past year or two have all been met with almost universal disdain concerning their quality and reliability. Just look at the Sequoia and Tundra. Both of these vehicles have had countless issues with their own engine, and this just adds insult to injury, further ruining Toyota's reputation as a great manufacturer and most reliable brand currently available. Practicality, peak mediocrity. As if things weren't bad enough, one would expect that swapping a naturally aspirated engine with a turbocharged one would bring in the regular benefits of having higher towing capacity due to an increase in torque. But guess what? It didn't. In fact, this did quite the opposite. You see, the previous generation of the Toyota Tacoma could tow up to 6,800 pounds, which, albeit not the best in its segment, was still extremely competitive and allowed the Tacoma to fall in with the pack rather neatly. The new generation, though? nuh -uh. You get 6,500 pounds max. That's a 300-pound reduction. And to make things even worse, with all its peers getting redesigned, the Tacoma has now become a punching bag for its competition. No mid-size pickup truck, save for the Honda Ridgeline, comes with less than 7,200 pounds max towing capacity, with the Colorado, Gladiator, and Canyon having a whopping 7,700 pounds maximum towing capacity. In addition to that, the payload capacity has seen virtually no change, as it's been increased from 1,685 pounds to 1,709 pounds, which is just laughable, and it puts it near the bottom of the pack. And you know what's the funniest thing about it all? You literally don't even get the MPG benefits from transitioning to a turbo four engine, as it can do 23 miles per gallon tops with four wheel drive equipped, as opposed to the 22 miles per gallon of the previous generation. And that one MPG more is due to it having an eight speed gearbox. So essentially we've traded simplicity for nothing. It'd be funny if it weren't tragic. Off-road performance, not the Tacoma we've come to know. The previous generation of the Tacoma has been widely adorned as one of the best off-roaders you can get for your money. The only mid-sized pickup truck that could rival it and arguably beat it was the Jeep Gladiator. Now, truth be told, this was also because Toyota was practically the only manufacturer that actually give thought to its off-road trims and make them as capable as possible, whereas the rest, such as the old Colorado and the old Ranger, weren't exactly aiming for that. However, as of their redesign, all of these trucks have hit it pedal to the metal when it comes down to the off-road trims, and both the Colorado ZR2 as well as the Ranger Raptor are exceptionally capable off-road. And what about Tacoma? Well, it too has gone through an improvement. However, it's simply not good enough to allow it to run in front of the pack in this regard. 
You see, apart from not offering coil springs at the back, the Tacoma is generally uneventful in terms of upgrades. Sure, this allows the Tacoma TRD off-road to have a bit more flexibility and articulation. However, this is cut short by the fact that the TRD off-road suspension simply isn't on the level of the other two, as this isn't the top of the line trim. No, that would be the Tacoma TRD Pro, which is a hybrid, and it also is far more expensive than either of its two rivals. Plus, the added weight, the reduced towing capacity, and everything makes all the benefits of the coil springs reduced to nothing. And if that wasn't enough, the Tacoma's powertrain is once again its biggest letdown here. The 2.4 liter is simply way too weak compared to the ZR2's 2.7 liter, let alone the 3.0 liter twin-turbo V6 found in the Raptor. This reduction of output makes it less capable than an overlanding vehicle, which is then amplified by the coil springs, as their implementation also resulted in the truck having lesser towing capacity. Quality control, non-existent. What in the world was Toyota thinking? In a day and age when everyone is doing their best to make a truck's interior as good as possible, Toyota decided to cut us short in this regard. Virtually all the trims, until the Tacoma Limited, have an incredibly plasticky interior that's full of that hard, scratchy plastic. The same translates to the exterior of the truck, which is made out of flimsy and cheap plastic through and through, and is also combined with so cheap trim and wheel options for the lower end models that you'll find it disgusting at how much money. This is a massive drop compared to, say, the GMC Canyon, the Ford Ranger, and even the Nissan Frontier. And albeit the Colorado has a similar low quality interior and exterior, it's also almost $6,000 cheaper when it comes down to the cheapest crew cab options of both trucks. Believe it or not, the crew cab Tacoma SR costs nearly as much as the entry-level GMC Canyon, which offers a stronger engine, better interior quality, four-wheel drive as standard, and in our opinion, an even better design. In fact, it brings us to the most important point of today's video. Price, unreasonably expensive, $31,500. For a base extended cab SR with rear wheel drive and 240 horsepower. Can you imagine that? $31,500. And if you want a crew cab, the cheapest one, the SR crew cab, will set you back over $35,000. With the TRD Sport costing around $39,500. And the TRD Off-Road being near as makes no difference $42,000. That's literally the Ranger Lariat's territory. And that truck comes with a better engine, greater towing capacity, better comfort, and a much better interior. The Tacoma Limited, which is the model that you could arguably compare to the Ranger Lariat, cost over $52,100, which makes it nearly $10,000 more expensive than the Lariat. And for the money, you'll be getting very little stuff, albeit we have to say the interior will have been improved over the rest of the Tacoma lineup. And it now has more soft touch materials, albeit still not on an enviable level. In addition to this, the TRD Pro, which is the range topper, cost $63,900, making it almost 10 grand more than the Ranger Raptor, and also $15,000 more than the ZR2. Even the ZR2 Bison, which is a thoroughbred off-roader, costs less than $61,000, and it can run literal circles around the TRD Pro off the pavement. But you know what's the worst part of all this? It's not the MSRP. It's the constantly high dealer markups. You see, Toyota dealers started drastically marking up the Toyota Tacoma ever since the new model was introduced. As a result, you can find countless complaints that dealers are marking up their Tacomas up to 30%. As a result, you can oftentimes see a model like a TRD Off-Road, which is a $42,000 truck, go for $60,000 plus with a few additional options. In our opinion, they did this because they recognized that the Tacoma is extremely overhyped as a vehicle, and they expected that the truck would sell regardless of the price. Thankfully though, most of us have gotten the hang of this, which actually resulted in Tacoma's sales hitting a wall and dropping down significantly compared to the previous model years. The Tacoma has had a 9% drop in sales, which is a drastic change, especially if you take into consideration the fact that all of its competitors have had a sales increase of at least 10%. That said, even with their sales reduction, the Tacoma is still by far the best selling truck as it's still sold in larger numbers than the Ranger, Canyon, and the Colorado combined. And frankly, we get it. 
As much as it has dropped drastically in terms of overall quality, the Tacoma is still a relatively safe option. However, its days of absolute domination over its segment are definitely over.